Welcome to Align Your Practice, an exploration of the seamless relationship between the business of chiropractic and the future of natural health care. Join us as we engage with an array of talent, from seasoned experts to passionate new entrepreneurs. Now, here's your host, Dr. Joe Esposito. Hi, welcome to this episode of Align Your Practice podcast. This is Dr. Joe Esposito, and we have a uh good friend and a previous guest on the call again. This is uh, Dr. Tabor Smith. How are you doing, Doc? Hey, everybody. Doing great. Awesome. We had a good conversation last time about your journey with spinal hygiene. That was, that was awesome. I think people are really getting behind that deliverable. We talked about the comparison to the dental world, uh, which was great. Um, and, uh, and you kind of broke down kind of the process a little. Any other thoughts from that or, or pick us back up where we left off about spinal hygiene? Are you, we said we're yeah, starting to see know, a little I, more you know, overall, right? And the concept. Correct. Yes. Uh, so it's no uh, question. It's not a surprise that we're starting to see more and more decay and degeneration in spines in our communities. Uh, it's happening at younger ages. We're having teenagers now that are coming in with, uh, phases of spinal degeneration. And, uh, and so more and more we're working on arthritis and decay and degeneration on, on, on everybody in our office. We're trying to regenerate. We're trying to help patients correct their spinal health. In fact, many, myself and many of the docs that we work with, this is our core, uh, you know, foundational product in our office. This is, this is one reason why uh, we didn't really get into nutrition as much or other, you know, forms of, of wellness or health. And, and what I realized was that if we're going to do a, a good job or, a, a, you know, a sufficient job of actually regenerating and helping patients correct their spine, that the spine needs nutrition in order to thrive. And so that was one of the things that I'm so grateful I was able to connect and reach out with you. Uh, was to get help through Asiva to actually, you know, look at what does the spine need nutrition wise, you know, we're correcting alignment, we're correcting mobility, we're correcting uh, strength and muscle tone around the spine for our patients. But if that nutrition is not there, we're not getting the regeneration on the spine that we need to get. So yeah, that's, uh, that's great, great topic, great, great concept to find that gap. Um, and, and I'm breaking up a little bit, Tabor. If you notice that during the final recording, it'll be clean, but I know I can feel the internet's choppy here. Um, yeah, so it's the same story we had in Align Life, you know, uh, is that we are taking care of patients, removing subluxations, re look, reviewing posture, reviewing lots of different components on spinal integrity. And we realized the huge gap with people with their body composition being altered, people with nutrient deficiencies, people with toxicity, all these different components that we either had to refer or we had to figure a way to deal with that in order to get them to an optimal state of health. So I appreciate you reaching out with our sister company, Asiva, in helping to fill the gap. So I think that'd be a good conversation for us to talk at Spinal Hygiene and how not only does the movement protocols that you have, postural protocols, the book that you have to guide us as patients to, you know, uh, to bring more integrity to uh, our spinal maintenance, but also yeah. what kind of nutrients do we need? So I'll, I'll talk about a couple things and, uh, and we can break this down a little bit, but I think the well, enlightenment you and I had together. Oh, well, tell me your thought and then I'll, I'll pull this well, information. One of the up. things I'd like to preface this, uh, you know, this entire conversation with uh, is an interesting characteristic about the discs in our spine. Uh, when we go through puberty, we lose blood flow to the discs. So, you know, and one of the reasons is, right, we're, we're let's say when you're born, you're one foot long. When you're 16, you're now five foot, right, or six foot. And so in 16 years, you've, you've grown five or six feet. In the next 16 years, you don't want to grow another five or six feet. We don't want 10 foot, 20 foot people walking around. And so puberty is a, is a change of hormones, which actually decreases blood flow to a lot of areas. And we're not growing as fast as we, uh, we were anymore when we were kids. One of the areas that loses blood flow is the disc space, loses it completely. It becomes avascular. So then post 
uh, puberty, the only way to keep a disc healthy is through a process called imbibition or movement. And I, you know, I've taught hundreds of thousands of hours of spinal hygiene content. And I say over and over, the only way to get a disc healthy again is, is increasing that movement, pumping nutrients in and waste material out nutrients in waste material out. And so we can get that disc moving and pumping through chiropractic care, uh, through regular home spinal hygiene exercises. And then the key is understanding what nutrients do our patients need to be pumped into that disc through the process of imbibition. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, so it's a pretty much a glaring gap when you're doing everything you need to do and you, you're hundred percent on pace with imbibition is kind of creating like a negative vacuum or a negative pressure to actually pull in nutrients into the disc to help that heal. That's kind of the process of imbibition. So the, the other component, like the disc is really a ligament and it, and it's a majority of fluid and we're pulling in nutrients into the disc, but the disc being a ligament, the other component are all the ligaments around that motor unit, those two vertebrae. We have we have ligaments supporting and holding that entire motor unit together. And those ligaments, in addition to the disc, go through remodeling. So when you have a subluxation and we have altered position and altered movement of a motor unit of two vertebrae with the, the uh, intervertebral disc in between, when, when those positions of those vertebrae are altered, uh, altering the IVF, the size of the IVF, altering the disc, in the, the causing more um, uh, bulging or compression potentially of the neurological tissue that exits that IVF, but also the when those ligaments are stretched or damaged, um, they have to remodel over a period of time. So how do you remodel? We got to remember that the ligament is live tissue; it's living tissue, and it's constantly going through remodeling. So I think the excitement that we had recently when we were we talked is understanding that these ligaments remodeling is like remodeling life tissue and i brought up the example of a bone how does a bone remodel it has osteoclasts and osteoblasts we know that there's drugs out there that stop the osteoclasts you have if you have osteoporosis just take fosamax one of these other drugs it stops the breakdown it only builds the bone well, we found out that that makes it brittle because you always have to break down and rebuild. You always have to do that. Well, the same thing with ligaments. So the, the research shows that the ligaments go through degradation and remodeling, rebuilding. And that is done around nutrients, right? Exactly what you're saying. Imbibition and nutrient uh, presence to re rebuild these ligaments. So um, I share with you a bunch of our research, Tabor. I think you were excited with it. And I, I'm sure that's going to get into your, your talks and your workshops in the future, because uh, I've heard you speak around everything else that was, you know, on point with current research. So this is going to really bring some more juice. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I have a, uh, so, sorry, I have a three hour uh, lecture that I'm giving this weekend. I'm taking that research that you sent over and definitely putting it in that, that lecture this weekend. Um, and, you know, I, I've learned so much. I, First of all, uh, Aceva, it wasn't even a question about going with Aceva because we want the quality nutrients. It doesn't matter what you put in the body if you don't have quality, right? Um, but secondly, learning, uh, you know, the concepts. A, a patient used to ask me, what should I take for my spine or for my discs or for my joints? And I would tell them, you know, glucosamine chondroitin. That was just like I threw that out because I didn't know, understand what else there was. But learning from you, you know, you have to have other things available as well. You have to have vitamin C. You have to have... Um, you know, other nutrients, there's B vitamins that are important. And, uh, you know, all those things work together, or that body's not going to be able to regenerate and heal. Yeah, so we're in your program, uh, using a little bit of uh, using some uh, omega three fatty acids to help offset the high inflammatory diet that Americans have. So we, we damper inflammation. Then we give a broad spectrum multivitamin, multi-mineral uh, component that has vitamin C, has vitamin D. So it's given us a, a nice broad range of support on all the ligaments. Uh, I'm sorry, all the minerals and vitamins that are needed for ligamentous repair um, as a second one. And then a, a nice ratio of chondroitin with glucosamine and MSM. There was some uh, preliminary research showing 
uh, chondroitin with glucosamine with MSM added, that sulfation group has really helped the impact that has in, in reducing the symptoms from uh, osteoarthritis, the pain, um, and, and the repair that can occur at the uh, ligamentous level. So adding those three together in your program, I'm really excited about spinal hygiene uh, future by covering that final base, which is the nutrient base. Yeah. And if somebody, if the listener wants to go and see what's in this uh, spinal wellness uh, pack and program, uh, they can go to spinalhygieneproducts.com forward slash nutrition. And we'll have all of the information on that on the website. Um, another thing I think is important to mention before we, uh, before we get off here is the fact that, you know, number one, it's going to improve results, people getting better, um, improving, getting out of pain faster is one, but also actually helping them regenerate and heal as much as possible. Number two is it also adds a continuity part of, of patient care that wasn't there, uh, you know, initially with just our home spinal care kits, we would give the patient a kit, they could use those products for, uh, you know, forever. And lot, I mean, they might refer and say, Hey, I need a, a kit for my wife or for my, you know, uh, friends or family. But um, now with this nutrition, as you were talking it, that the spine continues to need that nutrition to remodel over, over years. And so this is something that uh, can add a you know, a piece of continuity and an income ongoing in your practice as well. Yeah, that's a great point. So we're looking at, we got to, we got to tell the truth straight from research, research study done um, by Dr. Hauser, uh, Rehabilitation Journal. It's been uh, about eight to 10 years or so, but really good research showing that the remodeling process takes years. Uh, one to two years is, is a general idea. Uh, when you look at Joe Felicia's work back years ago, decades ago, they said the same thing. It takes, it takes months to years for ligaments remodel. So we want our patient's mindset to say, you know, the spinal hygiene program, you should do it forever, but I want you to commit for the, just the first, whether you say 12 months or 24 months, I want you to really commit definitely during that first phase of ligament remodeling. I want it to become a major component of your, your health uh, maintenance, a major component, brush your teeth, spinal hygiene. Let's just keep that locked in for at least a year or two. After that, you know, we still want you to do it daily, but I want their mindset around that first phase of ligamentous healing. Now we have that subluxation that's been corrected and the ligaments remodeled so we can create the highest level of uh, long-term chiropractic impact. So it's a good point yeah. that because we have that continuity, we look at better results, uh, long-term remodeling ligaments, but also continuity of dollars to your clients, uh, chiropractors that are using the program. So future facing, they'll be able to get this on subscription. So I know there's a lot of clinics you probably have talked to, uh, Tabor, where they don't want to get involved in having to deal with, you know, inventory or product or anything. They just want to take care of the patient's spine. So this would be able to be sent directly to the patient through, you know, your spinal hygiene program, which makes it so seamless and easy to deliver uh, instead of having to do, you know, a lot of work inside the clinic. Yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate all your help with this because it really solves a lot of problems. Uh, number one, like you said, uh, the, the docs not having to hold, um, you know, uh, you know, store things in, the, in their office um, inventory. That's one. Number two, a lot of docs just, they, you know, they focus so much on the spine, they don't even want to touch nutrition, but this is helping them to understand this is part of spinal care. You know, this, this helps you to do a better job uh, of helping patients take care of their spine. Uh, and then number three is part of our program is about creating awareness and creating habits. And imagine if you could say to somebody, you know, just, just brush your teeth for a year for the next 12 months, for the next 24 months, just <laughs> brush your teeth, right. And just watch the difference. And, uh, I guarantee you by the end of that, that person's going to be like, this is so great. I'm not stopping brush, brushing my teeth. I'm going to keep doing it. And, and that's what we're, we're trying to build in our office of those patients who are lifetimers and just this, this program, and especially now that it's kind of, uh, I would say, even complete with this nutrition uh, component now, it's just going to help offices around the world. So I appreciate you, you helping us to help them. 
Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I think what we're talking about is actually going to create more compliance. Because if you say, here, do this program the rest of your life, right away, the compliance is like, if you say what you just said, really serious those first 24 months, it's still good to brush your teeth after that daily. But that first two years, I want you committing every day because get the most healing. If you say that in spinal hygiene, you're right. They'll really overly commit during that first phase. And then they're going to want to continue because they feel good and they know the impact it's making. So I kind of like that languaging just for patient compliance. So awesome. So if you have any questions, uh, let's uh, put in the show notes below. You guys can get in touch directly with Dr. Tabor. Dr. Tabor's uh, focus is subluxation-based chiropractic, the spinal hygiene component being something that has been missed in the profession that he has uh, personally said a, uh, uh, a personal passion and mission to solve for the profession. So I appreciate all the work you've done to create this, this movement. I think uh, we're following the dental mindset of dental hygiene, which uh, has been a big need for us for 100 years. So great work, Tabor. Questions, concerns, want more information from Dr. Tabor's work, his website should be listed in the show notes. So thanks again for getting on, Doc. This episode was brought to you by Align Life Chiropractic and Natural Health Centers. If you're interested in creating your dream practice or want to know more about Align Life, go to alignlifepodcast.com. <laughs>